It's Friday, July 23rd, and the time for the Barbados Daily Mail News Update. Members of the Barbados Association of Retailers, Vendors, and Entrepreneurs will be given an opportunity to vote for a new president at next month's general meeting. Election for the post is constitutionally due in the next three years. However, the incumbent Bavin President Alistair Alexander has announced that he will put up his office for re-election following several accusations which he described as false. He's looking to have a general meeting next month, God willing. And in this planet, I, I, I plan to, to offer, although I am not up for re-election, I am not okay. I, I plan to, to ask the, the board permit, to permit me to, to offer my, my office up for, for re-election. Next month, I'll be there. I plan to offer up to, to, to put up my office, right, okay, for re-election, although it is not true, right, okay. The development follows a press conference held yesterday where Crystal Stewart, who is the spokesperson for a group of 40 Bavin members, revealed that there were several long-standing issues which Alexander had failed to address. Chief among them was what she described as exorbitant fees being charged by Bavin to utilize the new market located along the mighty Griner Highway. But the president explained that the organization had goals which included being self-sufficient. We have a vision whereby that we, are, we, we want to take ourselves out of the hands of having to depend the people to take ourselves of having to depend upon government for everything, okay? We believe that uh, a business community should be responsible for itself, but right? I should work towards being responsible for itself. We are not believing that we have to ask government for everything or the taxpayers to be supported by the taxpayers' money. When we can have a business who can make money, then we can uh, support ourselves. In the past, when we were by the temporary location, I myself was never paid. Never. I managed the location. I was the only manager in Barbados that was not paid. Right? And that was not the fault of, of the members of the association. I tell them don't pay me. Because I know a $10 cannot pay me. Right? Okay, and still we do the things that we. We had to do that we were responsible for, right? Okay, and run in the market. And um, uh, they are those who, therefore, telling themselves that we want to build a new location and they are going to do the same thing, right? That we I can get people to volunteer to do this and volunteer to do the next. No, people are being paid. We have staff. The National Union of Public Workers the National Council will be exploring all its options in the week of the High Court decision to reinstate Akani McDowell as a member of the union and to allow him to contest upcoming presidential elections. Justice Cecil McCarthy delivered the ruling on Thursday and directed the NUPW not to hold elections within 21 days. He also ordered that McDowell be allowed to submit his candidacy for president on or before July 29th. Bobby Lister Day was reliably informed that the union's highest decision-making body was expected to hold an emergency meeting on Thursday evening. At the same time, McDowell's two challengers for the post of president, Kimberly Agard and Fabian Jones, told Bobby yesterday the court's ruling would have little impact on their preparations for the poll. The University of the West Indies Cable Campus is on course to surpass the last year's student enrollment of about 6,000. At the same time, campus officials have revealed that over $1 million in support was extended to students over the past academic year, which included the writing off of student fees. Although unable to give exact figures, campus principal Professor Yudin Barito said there was a slight uptick in the number of applications for the upcoming academic year, 
when compared to the same period last year. We were very surprised because we expected there to be a decline in enrollment and when we compared statistics for the academic year before to the academic year under COVID, we had a marginal increase and that was really, I mean, it, it was pleasantly surprising. And all indications are that there will also be an increase in student numbers in the current academic year. Now, and how we do that, we compare the applications to date with applications for a similar period for the year before, and the applications are up. Now, we will actually know, because students apply, we make offers, and when they accept those offers, they, reg they, they are then registered. And we can say definitely, usually by the time of matriculation, we can say more definitively whether or not there is an increase. But the indications are that there will be an increase. And by the time of um, matriculation, my successor, Professor Clive Landis, will give some indication of the figures. So we will know, um, we'll be able to compare between what I've said now, how it looks, and, and all the trends are that it is looking like it, there's going to be an increase in numbers over the past academic year. Deputy Principal Professor Winston Moore reported that the Cable Campus has been providing financial and other assistance to students. This has been a really difficult time for our students, both financially as well as mentally. We've been supporting students uh, mentally. Uh, all students at the Cable Campus have access to uh, the counseling to help with the with these mental issues that they might face. You know. Uh, when you come to university, you come to university to rub shoulders with your with your colleagues, to um, to speak to some of the the most brilliant minds that you would ever come across. Um, but we didn't have an opportunity to do that with the COVID pandemic, um, so it was a little bit rough for our students. But we've been trying to support them as much as possible. And then a lot of the uh, the uh, the students, the, the, their parents would have also suffered um, during this period as well. Um, you would have, would have seen the reports in terms of the increase in unemployment in Barbados, but a similar thing happened throughout the entire Eastern Caribbean, which is a normal catchment era for um, the University of West Indies. So one of the things that I'm very proud of um, is that the University of West Indies, we provided support to our students in the tune of over $1 million last year in terms of writing off um, student fees, providing um, grants and those type of things. There's regional and international news after this short break. From the region, the Delta variant of the coronavirus has been identified in Antigua. And while the virus was detected in a sample taken from a visitor to the country who has since left, health officials are concerned that the variant could be circulating among the members of the public. The country's chief medical officer, Dr. Rhonda Silly Thomas, spoke to ABS News about the development. So this um, individual was identified in a traveler who travels from the person who travels from the United States, and the person is um, no longer an active case, and they're no longer in Antigua and Barbuda. So no, it's not one of the current active cases. Mm. Uh, what more can you tell us about the contact tracing? Because uh, we know that uh, the Delta variant is highly transmissible. Uh, are you concerned that, that, that uh, the Delta variant would have uh, already been transmitted from this individual? And what contact tracing has been done on this? My concern is that this, is, this tells us that as we um, expected, the Delta variant is now in Antigua. Yes, we picked it up in this one sample. But um, it doesn't mean that it's not circulating. So persons have to be extremely careful. As we, um, I would have said in the press release, it's, uh, the Delta variant has increased transmissibility. Um, in fact, 90, uh, you know, as countries compared to the other variants of concern and variants of interest. So 
Um, yes, very, very concerned that although we picked it up in this sample, it could be circulated in other um, persons in Antigua and Barbuda. And finally, China has rejected the next stage of the World Health Organization's plan to investigate the origins of the coronavirus pandemic. Or in this report from Reuters. China has rejected the World Health Organization's plan for a second phase of an investigation into the origin of the coronavirus. The plan includes a hypothesis that the virus could have escaped from a Chinese laboratory, and the proposal includes doing audits of labs and markets in the central Chinese city of Wuhan. On Thursday, Vice Minister of the National Health Commission, Zhang Yixing, told reporters he was taken aback when he read the details. To be honest, when I first saw the WHO's second phase of an investigation into the origin of the coronavirus, I was very surprised, because in this plan, the hypothesis of China violation of laboratory procedures causing virus leakage is one of the research priorities. In this aspect, I feel the plan disregards common sense and defies science. The origin of the virus remains contested among experts. The first known cases emerged in Wuhan in December 2019. The virus was believed to have jumped to humans from animals being sold for food at a city market. A joint report in March by a WHO-led team that spent four weeks in and around Wuhan with Chinese researchers backed up that thesis. It said the laboratory leak theory was extremely unlikely. But other countries, including the US and some scientists, have not been satisfied with that conclusion. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidistudy.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.